Our fight is with weapons unseen. The enemies crash to their knees as we rise up in worship. When trials unleash like a flood, the battle belongs to our God as we cry out in worship.
So today's message is called Citizen. Get you guys into the habit of doing is using your perception. Two spiritual gifts when you start learning things in the spirit that you have to use. You have to use discernment and perception because Paul teaches us to uh, test the spirits. Make sure they are of God. Now, if he's telling you to test the spirits, that means other spirits are going to come and try to teach you something that ain't right. And that's called wild gourds and strange fire. And we don't want no strange fire. So That is not limited to, hear me now, that is not limited to your brothers and your sisters next to you. Okay, uh-huh, all right, because we're talking spiritual things now. My words to you are not carnal, but they are spiritual. So now, if I am a no longer stranger or foreigner, but fellow citizens with the saints and the members of God's household, who are also the members of God's household if I am a citizen of heaven? Come on, answer me now. The angels are members of God's household. All right, Jesus Christ is your, we always say, Jesus Christ is my brother. <laughs> I got an inheritance, but guess what? He got other brothers too. They're called the, the sons of God. Yeah. All right, come on now. Can I get an amen? amen. Philippines uh, chapter 3, verse 20. For our citizenship is not, is not, it's not, it's going to be, no, our citizenship is in heaven, yeah. from which we also eagerly.
to the things of this world because when you were born again, your identity changed. And you go to the embassy of America. That embassy in that foreign country won't feel like that foreign country. It's going to feel like America. And they're going to uphold American values. They're going to protect American citizens. So if you're an ambassador of Christ, so we already established that you're a citizen of heaven. You're an ambassador of heaven because you're representing God, but you have an embassy, which is your home. How does your home feel like heaven? Is there praise and worship in your home, or is it reserved to just on Sunday? Do you have the atmosphere of heaven in your home, or is it the last fight you got in with your spouse, or the last argument you got into? Hmm? Hmm? Because if you have another citizen of heaven come knocking on your door because they're in trouble, because Embassies are placed into foreign countries so that the, the, the citizens of the other country can come to the embassy and get what? Refuge. Can I come to your embassy and get some Jesus? Can I come into your embassy and feel God? Can I come and lay down my head and is there peace flowing through your embassy? Come on, somebody. Are you representing him or are you representing you? Hmm. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't be afraid. And then do not be conformed to this world. No, you can't be conformed to this world no more because you're what? Citizen. There you go. You got one person who's a citizen. That's it. <laughs> but be transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? So he's already telling you that you can't conform to this world because not only are you a citizen, but you're an ambassador. An ambassador represents the will of the country in which it was sent, and your country is heaven. So you've got to represent the will of the country that was sent, okay? So then your mind gets renewed, so humility comes in because you say, well, the world does it this way, but God said, I ain't doing it that way. I want you to do it that way. And you say, okay, there's a conflict. The way I want to do it, the way God tells me to do it, so therefore i got to lay that down, and i got to follow him and do it his way. And there's always a reason why God wants you to do it a certain way. Right, right? Because everything that God does for you is because he loves you. And it's going to bring forth your glory. It's going to benefit you. God asks you to do stuff so he can bless you. God asks you to do stuff so he can give you favor. God asks you to do stuff so you can be the bright and morning star. So you can shine above everybody else and so people can run to you. That's why God asks you to do stuff. This ain't legalism. This is God trying to bless you. Come on, somebody. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 8 through 10. 
in the in the NLT. Yes, we are fully confident, and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we would be what at home. At home with the Lord. So y'all just on vacation. Some of y'all's vacation ain't good. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am. But y'all just on vacation. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. Every one of us. Why? Because he's put a mandate on your life. I made you a citizen. I made you an ambassador. You're my brothers and you're my sisters. But there's some things you just cannot do. So everything that you have done in the body, I will judge. We will each receive whatever we deserve. Whoa, 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 where'd you go? <laughs> we will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. That's why God's like, mm, don't do it that way. But I'm saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, I know that. So act like it, okay? All right, do what I ask you to do so you can reflect me so that the good things that you do in the, in the body, you can get a big reward because it's God's rewards program. I'm going to reward you for the good things that you do. I am, I promise. You do bad things, uh-uh, uh-uh. And then we run to Jesus like, Jesus, I need some grace. I didn't tell you to do that in the first place. You're not reflecting me. And then people start getting into abusing grace. Oh, abuse the grace. Oh, I'll just go ahead and do this anyways, and, 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 and God will forgive me. Well, yeah, he'll forgive you, but maybe that thing that you did cost you a jewel in your crown. Do you want to be the one that gets up there and you got this little bit, <laughs> this little bit itty, itty, itty crown, right? Ain't got no jewels in it, and you're like, well, you got so many jewels in your crown, and mine's so small. There ain't no participation programs in heaven. So what is a citizen? Let's break this down. Those are the, the supporting scriptures. Those of you who like to take notes, write that down. So what is a citizen? Because it needs to be defined so we can get a clear understanding. Definition of a citizen is a native or a nationalized person who, watch this, this is the words we choke on, who owes, owes, owes allegiance to a government and is entitled to protection from it. So God said, because you're a citizen of heaven, you're aligned with me. You owe me that much. Yeah. I killed my son for you. Yeah. He died, he bled on the cross for your sins. Now I've made you a citizen and ambassador to reflect me, so now you owe me your allegiance. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So allegiance is what? The fidelity, fidelity owed by a subject or citizen to a sovereign or government. The obligation of an alien to the government in which the alien resides. We just learned that where we reside in that. In heaven. We are seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. I'm just passing through here because I'm on vacation. It's a bad vacation, Jesus. I want to go home. Isn't it funny that when you have people about to die, they always say to you, I want to go home, and they ain't talking about going back down to the street. No, their spirit knows where they came from. In the book of Ecclesiastes, God says that the spirit that he gave will return to him, and it always like, I want to go home now. You know, this earthly body is weighing down on me, and I'm sick of the weight. Can we go home now? So that's where your home is. A devotion or loyalty to a person or group or cause. Fidelity is the, the quality or state of being faithful. Uh-oh. How faithful are you to God and his, and his purpose for your life? Hmm? Check your faithful meter. I owe you a light allegiance so that I can... Bring forth your glory on the earth so that you can bless me and other people can see me being blessed through you so that I can win them over to you so that your glory can spread on the earth because you want them to be a part of your household too. You want them to be ambassadors too. You want them to show forth your glory also. Amen. Faithful is steadfast in affection and worship. Can I get Revelations chapter 4 starting... In verse 4, and we'll go to 11. 
Now, what we're going to do, since we went, went ahead and we, we defined what a citizen is, we're going to start looking at what a citizen looks like. Because God's a just God. He's not going to tell you to be something and do something and not give you an example. He's not going to say, I need you to do this. And you're like, well, I don't know what that looked like. Jesus, I'm in the world. They ain't, they ain't trying to be no citizens. They looking like this. So God's like, I got you covered. Yeah, yeah. Twenty and four thrones surrounded him. And twenty and four elders sat on them. They were all clothed in white and had gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and the rumble of thunder. And in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. Isn't that an awesome sight? That's what you're a part of. You have a crown. This is the sevenfold spirit of God. And in front of these thrones was a shiny sea of glass, sparkling like crystal. In the center and around the throne were four living beings each covered with eyes, front and back. They're citizens of heaven also. The first of these living beings was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a human face. And the fourth was like an eagle in flight. Each of these living beings had six wings, and their wings were covered all over with eyes, inside and out. Day after day, night after night, they keep on saying, Holy. Holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the one who was, always was, who is, and who is still to come. Whenever the living beings give glory and honor and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, the twenty and four elders, this is you, fall down and worship the one sitting on the throne and the one who lives forever and ever. And they lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and they exist because you created what you please. The elders would throw down their crowns at the feet of he who sits on the throne, symbolic of power. The crown always represented power. When an invading force would conquer a land, they would always locate the king's crown, and they would capture it and put it on, symbolizing they now have the power and authority of that land or of that region. The throwing down of the crown represents the elders giving their power and their authority to the one who sits on the throne as a sign of their Allegiance. In other words, they were saying, you have power over us, and we yield to you and your throne. How many of us take our crowns off to Jesus while we're here and give up our power and our authority, and we say, God, I thought I wanted to do it this way, but you said do it this way, so I'm going to take my crown off. And I'm going to get down and I'm going to say, worthy is you, O Lord. You do it your way. I have a way, but I'm going to give you my power and authority that you've given me so that your way can reign and people can see you instead of me. Yes. So what are the characteristics of a citizen of heaven? Number one, humility. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Give me an uh, NIV, please. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Okay, uh, New King James, this is fine. He has shown you, old man, what is good. Who has shown you? God has. And what does the Lord require of you? Because everybody wants to know. Okay, Jesus. Okay, God. You bought me with a price. I'm a citizen of heaven. I know nothing's free. 
So, what you want me to do? But to do justly. Justly is a Hebrew word, mispat, which means justice, judgment, law, regulation, or prescription, a specification. So Mark, what, what, what does that mean? What's justly? He wants you to be an example of his law, of how he would do things. Because what? You're a citizen, right? And then you're an ambassador, right? And then you're a member of the family. I know some of y'all, y'all about my age, when y'all used to go out, your mama and daddy would say to you, you better act like somebody. You better act like somebody, and don't you go out there and give my name, give our family a bad name. You, you better be, that's what God's like. God's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to break it down to you, and you better act like somebody. Yes. And, and don't be out there in the creatures of the night. You better not let those street lights be, 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 beat your home now. Yes. He says, to love mercy. Love mercy. I know they've done you wrong, but every single time you get a chance to be merciful to somebody, go ahead. Give them a pass. Because there was a time that you needed a pass too. Now, does that mean they ain't going to come back and do it again? You let God deal with that. You just want to get that jewel in your crown. God, I was merciful to them. You see, you see how they're still cutting up? No, I do this now. I'm like, God, you told me to be merciful to them now. I'm showing sure them getting tired of being merciful. And then that's why I got to take that crown and cast it down at his feet. But you still be merciful one more time. Because God said, in your weakness, my strength is perfected. Come on now. And to walk. God wants to walk with you. Yeah. There ain't a soul in this place God don't want to walk with. I want to walk with you. But for me to walk with you, you got to be humble. Yeah. Why? Because when I walk with you, I'm going to be teaching you some things. Yeah. And while I'm walking with you, so guess what? You're going to be learning. Yeah. And as you're learning while you're walking with me, guess what? You're going to start slowly turning into yes. me. Yes. If you have humility, because God does what? He gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So come on and walk with me now, because I want to teach you how to walk with me. And after I teach you how to walk with me, I'm going to teach you how to reflect me. And after I teach you how to reflect me, I'm going to teach you how to heal like I do. Yes. But you got it starts with the walk first. You can't, you, you can't crawl before you walk. And you can't run before you walk, okay? There are requirements that God expects from us. He desires for us to walk with him, but humbly, so that we can be teachable. They present themselves to the Lord every day. Number two, what do citizens of heaven look like? They present themselves to the Lord every day. When you get up in the morning, go ahead. I know you half eye open like this. And you're trying to find, the, they, they go to the dresser. But, but, but you get there and you say, God, I'm here. God, I'm here to do your work, to do your will. Show me. Show me today. Job chapter 1, verse 6 in the NKV, New King James Version. Uh, Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And guess who else came? And Satan came also. So what does that tell you? Because before Satan was Satan, he was Lucifer, right? So that means this was a habit. This is something they did every day. Because even though in his fallen state, he's like, oh, i got to go before the king. got to go present myself. And then, of course, and the Lord said to him, Satan, like, like he didn't know. Where you been, bro? What you, what, you, what, you, what, you, what you been what you been doing? Mm, I've been just walking around to and fro because I ain't allowed in your presence no more because uh, there was pride found in me. So since there was pride found in me, I can't walk with you. Uh -huh. So get that humility piece down so you always, by the Father, you keep on walking. Yeah. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Say, okay, Mark, those are angels, okay? Well, what about us? Okay, well, I'm getting there. Jesus, he's supposed to be our ultimate model, showing us what we're supposed to be like, what we're supposed to do, right? Now, in the morning, 
Everybody say in the morning. morning. Yeah, in the morning, not in the afternoon. In the morning, having risen a long while before daylight. Oh, Mark, now you're messing with me now. I don't want to, if that sun ain't up, I ain't trying to get up, bro. He went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. What was he doing? He was presenting himself to the Father. Before his day began, before distractions came, before something came and pulled on him to say, we're going to do it this way, he's going, no, 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 I got to check in. Mark, I don't like checking in. Well, that's accountability now. And that's your download now. And that's to get you ready for what's coming. Remember those, those, those stupid little commercials they used to have about this lady would come in and they would give her all the bad news and she would say, at least I have my orange juice. Oh, yeah. Did you get your Jesus juice this morning? Huh? You acting up and acting like a fool, not because you need some coffee, it's because you didn't check in with Jesus and get a download. Huh? You didn't get a refresher, okay? Last night you were sleeping and you woke up. That's why they call it breakfast when you first get the first meal of the day because you were fasting all night long. Isn't that the best time to hear a word from God? Because you're clean, you're clear. Such for those bad nightmares you had last night because you didn't check in before you went to sleep. Oh, we'll get into that a little bit too, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You was watching that stuff. You ain't got to be no, 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 let me stop. I'm going to leave you all alone. Get out the kitchen, Mark. Get out the kitchen. Number three. So now we got, we got to be humble, right? We walk with God with humility so he can teach us. We got to go present ourselves to him so that he can get us ready Get us the strength that we need for the day. And number three is the one we choke on the most is they inquired of the Lord. See, praying to God and inquiring to God are two different things. We pray to God and we ask, God, I want this. God, I want that. I'm going to name it, claim it, blab it, slab it. It's mine in Jesus' name because the scripture said, if I said it in Jesus' name, you give it to me. Hold hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. minute, minute. Back up the truck. Did you ask him first? (laughs) Did you? No. My flesh said, I want it. The Bible said, I can have it. So I slapped it together, made a peanut butter jelly sandwich, and it's mine. And God said, no. And now you walk around like, why not, Jesus? Because you're walking like that, that's why not. Because sometimes the things that we think is good for us is bad for us. Let's say God did give you a million dollars in the state that you're in, you're in right now. Would you do the right things with it? Huh? What, what? Hmm? Would you? Would you be the ambassador? She's like, no, I'm going to confess. No, I wouldn't. I'd be like buying this, 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 this. Would you be the ambassador of, of heaven with that kind of money? Would you be the, 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 the citizen? She's like, yes, I would. Would you be the citizen with that kind of money? Now, she would because you know why? Because she knows if she gives it back to heaven, God's going to breathe on it, shake it up, and give it back to her seven times more. She's like, I got a million dollars. I'm going to give it to God. He's going to give me five million dollars. What, player? And then I ain't never going to run out. So... They inquired of God, and we don't like doing that because we want to be what? What does this world system teach us? To be independent. God don't want you to be independent. He wants you to be dependent upon him. Why? Because he sees the end from the beginning. God exists outside of time. Remember, he said to Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. He didn't say, I was going to make you. He said, I already did it. And Abraham was just waiting for it to catch up. So we inquire of God. We, and the word inquire and sought after are the same Hebrew word daris, which means to inquire or consult, to get guidance. But we like calling up our friend. I got a problem. I need you to help me. They can't help you. They got the same problems. And their problem's worse. They, they ain't trying to help you. And they're looking through the, the lens of their experience to give you advice. Well, girl, this is what, this, this is what I would do. I, I would do this. And then it messes up. Like, I, ain't, I ain't friends with her no more. I ain't friends with her because she told me to do this thing. Well, y'all in the same boat, right? Oh, did we get on Facebook? Y'all pray, y'all pray for me. I got a problem. They, hey, guess what? They got a problem too. Yeah. Yeah. So we inquire of God. King Uzziah, 2 Chronicles, chapter 26, verse 5. New King James Version. Because there's a, there's a promise that God gives us if we keep inquiring of him. First, it increases our humility. If it increases our humility, we're able to walk with him more. Huh? 
Second, Second Chronicles chapter, I was like, no, that ain't even, <laughs> I was like, I can't preach that next. <laughs> I don't even know those people, <laughs> and they in the family, dang it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God, and as long, well, watch this now, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. This is the king of an entire nation. He was taught by the priest, Zechariah, the ways of the Lord and what to do. Now look, king, queen, we are part of your kingdom, and you got to seek this guy, Jesus, God, so that he can tell you the good things and the bad things so we can be prosperous. Because as long as you do it, you'll be prosperous. Judges, chapter 11, I mean, Judges chapter 1, verse 1. This is Israel asking for help. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, who shall be first to go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? They inquired of the Lord, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to fight so God could give them an answer so that they could be what? Successful. You want to be successful in life? Ask God. Ask him. It don't take nothing. God, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? Because I want you to bless me and I want to be prosperous. I want to be like, huh, see? I did it right. God bless me. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 19. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, and I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hands. Inquire of God. Ask them. After they inquired of God, guess what they did? They obeyed what he said. <laughs> Don't waste your time asking God what to do, and then you do the complete opposite. Well, that, that, that's a good idea, Jesus, and I know what it says in your word, but... I ain't going to do it. Then, then, then what happens? Hmm? Pride's found in you. And then what happens? You get pushed out of the presence. And then what happens? Bad things happen because you're not getting prosperous and you're not bringing forth his glory. James chapter 4, verse 13. James chapter 4, verse 13. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you don't know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or do that. Because now you're boasting in your arrogance. You're saying, I have control over everything. I have control of my life, and I'm using my will to do this. Why do we need to inquire of the Lord? Why? Because Jesus said we need to be like little children. And little children always do what? They drive you crazy. They ask you questions all the time. Hey, mommy, 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 why is the sky blue? Hey, mommy, 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 can I go outside? Hey, mommy, mommy, can, can, I, have a, can I have a bicycle? Hey, mommy, can I have a sandwich? And what happens when a kid don't ask you for permission and, and they go and do it? What you do? Go ahead, Brooke, tell us what you do. You're like, what'd you do that for? I didn't say you could have it. <laughs> Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Did you ask me for that? No. Give it back. You're grounded. <laughs> 30 days. <laughs> now I want you to go and you're moving fast and think about why I did that. And assuredly, I say it to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest of the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because... Humility is required to walk with God. 
And when you act like a little child and you ask God these questions, he will give you, give you, give you, give you. And number four, the citizens of heaven, they know how to enter into the presence of God. They know how to get into God's presence, go into the throne room. Psalms chapter 11, Psalms chapter, Psalms 100 chapter 4, Psalms chapter 100 verse 4, it says to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his course with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. So when you come before God, just tell him how great he is. When you came before your mom and your dad, and you, had, you asked them something, you asked them for something, it all depended on how you approached them, didn't it? Now, if you just walked in and be like, hey, ma, hey, dad, I want... New shoes. They were like, <laughs> you ain't getting no new shoes. But she was like, and they knew you was always up to something. You're like, Mom, you know, you know I love you, Ma. You know, you're the greatest mom. And you like, you, you butter them up. They're like, okay, what do you, what do you want? What, what, what do you want? Do you, do you wind up getting it? Sometimes. Did you clean your room last night? <laughs> did, did you do your dishes? <laughs> so praise God. Get in the habit of praising God. Psalms. 102, worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. They praise and worship God, not just on Sundays, but every single day, every single day. Make note of how great God is, how wonderful God is. And he's like, see that, see that, see, see that? Vicky praising me, I ain't done that before. See that? She just, she just keep on, she look at her, she's skipping praising me. Good, good night. And then what happens It's like, I didn't even ask for nothing, Jesus. But because of the level of the praise. Because of the level of adoration. Because remember, a citizen is, is, is supposed to give that anyways. God, I just give you praise, honor, and glory, and I just bless your name. What you want? Nothing. You sure? Yep. Well, why are you praising me? Because I just want to be in your presence. Because when I'm in your presence, you're going to teach me something. When I'm in your presence, your glory is going to rub off on me. And then when I leave your presence, I'm going to have some residue. And then when I walk past somebody, that residue is going to attach to their life, and it's going to change their life. And that, and that residue is going to spread on because I was with you. Have you ever been around somebody? They didn't have to say nothing. You just looked at them, and you're like, you've been with Jesus. I can tell because the glory is on your face. You've been with Jesus because the way you're acting, the way you're walking, the way you're talking, you've been with Jesus. Well, show me how to get there. Show me how to get there. They are obedient to God's ways. Oh, that's a little different than God's words, isn't it? Because you can say something and not do it, but when you say something and then you do it, that's ways. That's the way you act, right? So, but God's ways must be taught because we are what? A new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, Lord God, just teach me your ways. Teach me what you expect of me. Teach me how to mimic your ways. Teach me because I'm your ambassador. I'm a member of your royal family. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable will of God. Psalms chapter 1. 119, 33 through 40. Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees. Then I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding. Give me understanding. This is the humility part. You're saying, I don't even understand how to do it. I know you want me to do it, but give me understanding. Then God gives you grace. And then you say, and then I will keep your law and obey it with all of my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Why are you finding delight in God's commands? Because God's going to bless you. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. God rewards you for doing what he say. Yeah. It's like your mom and dad, when you did what they told you to do, they rewarded you. Uh -huh. They're like, okay, you cleaned your room. Okay, you can do this. Okay, this happened. Okay, you, you can do this. Turn my heart toward your statues and not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace that I dread for your laws are good. 
How I long for your precepts. Preserve my life, my life in your righteousness. The word righteousness used in these scriptures is the Hebrew word daqwa, which means acting according to God's standard. Why? Because you are a reflection of him. I'm a citizen of heaven, so I, I'm not going to do that. It's not that you can't do it. It's that you won't do it because who you represent. Pastor rode up to me today and said, you don't have to wear a suit. But this dress nice. What was he saying? You represent me? Put a suit on. So what did I do? Put on a suit. Why? Because I'm represent FTC, right? So if you are a child of God and he says, do this, go ahead and do it. I don't understand why I'm doing it. Don't make sense to me, God. It's like, but there's a blessing in it, so go ahead and do it because you're, you're representing me. Psalms 86, 11, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Luke 6, 46 through 9. Why do you, this is Jesus. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Jesus expects us to do what he says because we're a reflection of him. In every country in all the world, there are citizens. Every single country. And you can tell what country a citizen is from by the way they act, by what they say, by the clothes they wear, and the persona. So if you, if you haven't been already, if you have ever gone to a foreign country, you get off the plane, you present your passport, and you walk among the locals, when they see you, without you saying a word, they're going to say, that's an American. Why? Because of where you at. Now, same token, if a foreign national comes over here because of the way they dress, the way they hold themselves, and the words they speak, you're going to say, that person's from China, that person's from Russia. That because they are what they are holding to, their statues, their way of life from the country in which they're from. And then what do they do? They bring them to America and mix it all together. But they never stop holding on to where they come from. They may adapt some of the things, which we're not supposed to do because we're not supposed to be of the world. But they always hold true. So God's saying, do what I say because you're a reflection of me. So before you open your mouth, do people see me? Do they? Or are they confused? Do you walk like me? Is that air on, is that air, my air on you? Because the people you walk around, the people you hang around, you become. Whether you want to or not. Birds of the feather flock together. You, you heard that one, yeah. Like, it only takes one bad company to make everybody bad. To get that weed out, God says, now look. Do what I say, you, you reflect me. John 5 and 19, then Jesus answered and said to them, most surely I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. Why? Because he was re representing God the Father. He was God's ambassador to us. But what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. Why? Because he was doing his job. You were saved to get as close to Jesus as possible so you can be the lighthouse here on a dying world. That's why you were saved, so you can save other people. But if there's a blip on the reflector, we got to go to Jesus and get the, the reflector cleaned again so we can reflect the, the light. John chapter 6, verse 38, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Just as Jesus was sent to do the Father's will, so we are to do the same. That's why it's important for us to say, Jesus, what? What are we doing today? How, how am I reflecting you today? How am I showing forth your glory today? But another caveat of being a citizen of, of heaven means you're protected by the government, that government of heaven. 
Psalms chapter 91, verse 11 to 12. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. That takes away the fear that we were supposed to take away the fear and anxiety that we have because when we believe that we are citizens of heaven, when we believe and we know that we've inquired of God about this and we inquired of God about that and he, and he showed us the right way to do it and, and we did it and, and we're standing there and we've, we've put all these things together. When something bad happens, we know that God's coming. He's coming to protect us. He's coming to help us because what? We did it his way. Because what? We belong to that government. We have hostage situations all the time, right? People get kidnapped from America. The government says, we don't negotiate with terrorists. No, they don't negotiate with terrorists. You know why? Because they send the commandos in and, and get their property. It's an American citizen. I'm going to go get them. It goes the exact same way. You get yourself in a situation that you ask God about, and God said, yes, do it this way, and you did it that way, and you're, you're shining God, God's light, and then he goes and he says, what? You're in trouble? I'm coming to get you. Yeah. You ain't got to worry about it. You can sit there and look in the face of whatever's happening to you and say, you can do whatever you want, but guess what? I'm God's property, and he's coming. So go ahead. I'll give you nine seconds, and your life's about to change because Jesus is showing up for me. So what is the purpose of all this? Why does God want all these particular ways, one might ask? Why does God require us to come before him? Why does, well, why does God always want us to present himself, ourselves to him? Why does God always want us to inquire of him? Why does God want us to be humble? This just sounds like legalism at its best, Mark Summers. The whole purpose for all of this is so that you can be housed with his glory. Because if you don't do none of that, you don't have his glory. See, we have to return back to the days of old when people were hungry for the glory of God, the presence of God. Because it was the presence of God that changes everything. When God showed up in the burning bush, before God showed up, it was just a bush. It was just regular ground, but then when the presence of God came, it became holy. Yeah. And when Moses came, he said, take your sandals off, for the ground on which you stand is holy ground. God wants, you to, God wants to fill you with his presence so that when you walk past somebody, yeah, when, you, when you walk into a situation, you ain't got to say a word because of the presence of God that is in you changes the situation. It was the presence of God that changed the earth. And, and Genesis says the, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And then God spoke. And then the Spirit of God, the presence of God, changed this and changed that and changed this and changed that. God said, I want you to come to me so you can be filled with my glory. Not only does it change the people's lives around you, but guess what? It's going to change your life too. And then you become hungry for God's glory. You become hungry for God's presence. And then you just want to, I just want to, I just want to sit in your presence. And I don't want to go nowhere. Because there's my joy. There's my healing. And the longer you sit in God's presence, the longer you sit there and you bask in his glory. God fills you up and God changes you from the inside out. And you go and you change the world. You become that ambassador. God is saying, I bid you to come. I bid you to come so I can fill you. When you get weary and you're downtrodden because of the ways of the world, because of the death that is in the world, you need this life that I provide for you. So I can change everything. But I can't give it to you if you don't come. Yes. Lift up your hands this day and say, God, fill me with your glory. Yes. Fill me with your glory. Yes. Manifest your presence to me right now, right now. And if you don't know how, ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, teach me. 
Teach me to feel your glory. I know the Holy Ghost is inside of you, but there's a thing called the intangible manifest glory of God, and we need it today. You want to change the school system, you need God's glory. You want to change your atmosphere, your community, you need God's glory. That's why he made you an ambassador. That's why he gave you an embassy so his glory could be inside your house so that when people walk past on your block, they feel God's glory and they fall out under the power. Oh, that we would come back to the day when God's glory was on his people, when we look like God and we stop trying to look like the world, oh, that we would come to the day that we were hungry for his presence and we said, God, I don't care if you just don't give me anything. Just fill me with your glory. Fill me with your power and fill me with your might so I can change the world. Oh, we bless your name. Oh, we bless your name. We need more of you, God, less of us. And we need your spirit to teach us. We need your spirit to teach us. Father, we bless your name and we thank you for your presence this day. We thank you for this word and your plea to us to stop being like the world and come and take our place as citizens of heaven that we may reflect you that people may see and hunger after you and say, I want what they got. I want to be like them. They got, there's just something about you. I don't know what it is, but there's something and I need it. I need it. We bless your name, God. Breathe on us, God. Close your eyes and lift your hands. Close your eyes. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lift your hands. God is here. God is here and he's asking, do you want an outpouring? Do you want my glory? Do you want my glory? It's going to cost you. You know what it's going to cost you? It's going to cost you you. It's going to cost you your crown. It's going to cost you with the power you think you have. Because when you do it my way, God said, I'll pour into you. You can't reflect me if you're reflecting the world. You gotta make a decision right now, right here. I'm not talking about those who aren't saved. I'm talking about those who are saved. I'm talking about ones that know Jesus. Jesus said, this is for you. This is your invitation. If that's you, you need more of me. You need more of my glory in your life. <laughs> oh, bless your name. Bless your name. Yes, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Just go ahead and yield. Yield to his spirit. Yield to his spirit. There you go. Bruno Solevim Bramaku. Blow, Holy Ghost, blow. 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 There you go. There you go. That's God. That what you're feeling right now is new to you. That's God. That's God. Go ahead and yield to it. Go ahead. Yield to it. Yield to it. It is Shandala. Mark, I don't understand. It's okay. God's got you. It's all right. He's ministered to you right now. We need more of you, God. We need more of your glory. We need you, Lord. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory, and we bless your name. We thank you for your presence today. We thank you for manifesting your presence to us, Father. Teach us, O oh Lord, teach us, O oh Lord, how to walk in your glory, how to constantly come before you saying, I need more, I need more, I need more. In Jesus' name. I'm done. You guys blessed today? Right. Press in. Press in and get God's glory. Walk out with your head held up high and say, I am a citizen of God. And I'm going to reflect his glory. I'm going to reflect.